Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be solving an interesting exponential, maybe logarithmic, maybe both equation. We have ln x to the power ln x to the power ln x equals 8. In other words, we have a tower of natural logs, sort of. How do we simplify something like this? It kind of looks complicated, doesn't it? We can use properties of logarithms, that's what we're going to do, and I'll be presenting two methods. I'll also show you a graph at the end. Now, for a second, let's just think what happens if we have infinitely many of these, like ln x to the power ln x to the power ln x to the power ln x, so on and so forth. Does this converge? We're going to take a look at that as well. Let's start with the first method. First of all, because it's the first method, first of all, and then second of all, I want you to realize that ln x to the power ln x to the power ln x is not the same as ln x in parentheses to the power ln x in parentheses to the power ln x. You see the difference, right? In the first one on the left hand side, ln x to the ln x is an exponent for x. Make sense? So in other words, let me mark it. This is an exponent. Got that? Here, the exponent is ln x. If you go to the exponent here, I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain, but they're definitely not the same thing. And the main difference is we can apply properties of logarithms on the left, but not on the right because there's nothing to apply. It's like a to the a to the a, if you call ln x equals a. But on the left, it's not the same thing. Make sense? I hope it does. So, we're going to use, for our first method, we're going to use substitution, okay? Suppose ln x equals t. And you can use any variable you want, but t is one of my favorite variables and also one of my favorite drinks, especially black tea. I sometimes drink herbal teas as well if I'm too tired and I want to sleep. Anyways, so if ln x is equal to t, you know that ln is the natural log, hopefully, right? From here, uh, the base is e, so we can write this as x equals e to the power t. The inverse function for the ln function is the exponential, and vice versa, right? Now, we got to be careful, like I said earlier. We're going to first treat the exponent, okay? Again, the base, I think this kind of makes uh, the distinction. On the left-hand side, the base is x. On the right-hand side, the base is ln x. You see the difference? Okay, I hope you do. Now, we have to be very careful. How do you write this? First of all, I want to simplify this, which is the exponent on the left-hand side. Make sense? So here's what we need to do. We're going to replace x with e to the t and ln x with t. You see what I'm talking about? Okay, let's do it. We have ln x, which is e to the t, to the power ln x, which is to the power t. Great. This turns into what? It turns into ln because we are supposed to multiply the exponents, remember? When you have a to the b to the c, it's a to the bc. Of course, this is something that's not always true for complex numbers, but this channel is not all about complex numbers. There's another channel called a plus bi, which you can check out, and I'll also... I'm also publishing a video every day on that channel, as well as shorts once in a while. Uh, go ahead and check it out. Uh, this is a channel dedicated to complex numbers. I'm also planning to put together uh, some documentation that supports this. I also made lecture videos. Anyways, that's a different channel. Let's get to, back to work. So here, uh, using this rule, which is valid for real numbers, we can multiply the exponents. If you multiply t times t, you get coffee, I mean t squared. So this becomes ln e to the power t squared, which by properties of logarithms, turns into something super nice because you can now write it as t squared multiplied by ln e. In other words, you can go ahead and bring this down. And ln e is equal to one. You hopefully knew that, right? I mean, why did I write zero? I don't know. ln e is one, so this becomes t squared. So this expression is t squared. Good, that's my exponent. And now I have ln x to the power ln x to the power ln x. And this is my exponent, right? And the base is x. So what am I going to do? 
I'm going to write the ln. Be careful because don't replace ln x with t because this is not ln x. This is ln x to the power something. You got that? Hopefully. Okay. So we're going to write the ln first and then focus on this. What is x? x is e to the t. And then we're going to bring in the exponent, which is going to be this to the power ln x to the power ln x, which I found earlier, and that will be t squared. You got that? This is kind of like a sequence, maybe, uh, or I don't think it's recursive, but something that kind of repeats or in iterations. Anyway, something like that. I don't know what, what the right word is. But t times t squared is t cubed. So from here, we get ln e to the power t cubed. And again, for the same reason, this is equal to t cubed because ln e is equal to 1. You knew that, right? Okay, directly follows. So we got a very simple answer. Nice. What was the original problem? Did you forget? Hopefully not. We had ln x to the power ln x to the power ln x equals 8. Now we know that ln x to the ln x to the ln x is equal to t cubed, which is 8. From here, if you're looking for real values, t equals 2. By the way, we can also talk about complex values if you want. So t equals 2 doesn't give us the solution directly because we are looking for x. If t is 2, ln x is t, so ln x equals 2, and this means x equals e squared. Nice. That's the solution. Is that the only solution? That's a good question. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method, but maybe before we get into that, I can quickly show you what the complex solutions are going to look like, sort of, okay? Now, where do the complex solutions come from, first of all? Well, they come from cube roots of 8, because uh, every non-zero complex number has three cube roots. One of them is t. To find the other ones, you can go ahead and just, you know, use the formula or multiply the 2, which is the principal cube root, by, is there such a term? I think there's principal square root, but I'm not sure about the principal cube root. Anyways, I just made it up. On spot, um, you can multiply 2 by the first solution we found by the cube roots of unity. And what is the cube roots of unity? If you think about it, uh, they are given by this. For example, if n is equal to 1, you get um, z equals or cube roots of unity as e to the power 2 pi i over 3, which can be written as cosine 2 pi over 3 plus i sine 2 pi over 3. By the way, 2 pi over 3 is 120 degrees. So you can basically take the 2 and multiply it by this and multiply it by that again. And that will give you this, I think, right? And that will give you all the, all the solutions. Let's just take one of these. How about this one? Because we already kind of have an open form or the standard form. Cosine of 120. Think about the second quadrant, right? This is 60. This is 120. And if you think about the cosine, cosine is negative. Sine is positive. Cosine is negative 1 half. So it's going to be 2 times e to the power 2 pi over 3 is going to be 2 times cosine of 120 degrees, which is negative 1 half. The other one is going to be root 3 over 2, i. Okay? And when you distribute the 2, you're going to get negative 1 plus root 3, i. Now, this is the, what? t value. And t is ln x. So we're going to set this equal to ln x because this is t. And now we have ln x equals this. So x is going to be e to the power negative 1 plus root 3i. And the other one is just going to be coming from 4 pi over 3. Make sense? Okay, cool. Really quick, uh, I wanted to talk about the complex solutions. Now let's go ahead and talk about the second method. Second method is actually a lot easier. That's what usually happens with my second methods. We can go ahead and use the properties of exponents directly. Like what? You can go ahead and bring this to the front. This will become ln x to the power ln x. Multiply by ln x equals 8. And then you can do it again. Like bring this to the front. That'll be ln x times ln x times ln x equals 8. And then you're going to get ln x cubed equals 8. And then you'll get ln x equals 2. And finally, x equals e to the second power. Nice. So is that the only solution? We're going to check the graph. But if you had four of these, now you have a shortcut that you can use, right? This would be ln x to the fourth power in disguise. And if you had this, if you had this 2,024 times, then you would have ln x to the power 2,024. 
almost about to end, right? Infinite many times, it probably doesn't converge because think about ln x to the power infinity, that's infinity, right? What if this is super small, like zero? It approaches zero. If x, x approaches one, then this will approach zero, zero to the power infinity. Is that infinity as well? Something to think about. I'll leave it open. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph and we'll just finish up. Ta-da! This is the graph of ln x to the power ln x to the power x. By the way, I had to use parentheses. Desmos forced me to use parentheses around the uh, uh, argument of the ln function, but hopefully you can see clearly this is more clear. The, the way I wrote it is not that clear, but I left it ambiguous for a good reason. I just wanted to challenge you guys a little bit. Hopefully you like that. Okay, anyways, that's the graph. And if you wanted to close up, that's what it looks like. What happens at x equals one? That's for you to find out. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.